Okay, let's talk about something <coughs> else for a minute. Um, yesterday, the NDC held a press conference. Um, uh, well, actually, it was the, uh, the alliance, Inter, yeah, inter, inter, inter party, inter -party uh, um, resistance, resistance against, against the uh, new voter register. Voter register. A lot was said. <coughs> Nekra Krani Singh. Yeah, basically, I think that um, yesterday's press conference was basically to update the general public as to uh, the various key issues that have been debated upon. Um, the Electoral Commission has always had a position. And the uh, inter-party, uh, what do you call it, resistance against the new completion of the new register has also always had, a, a, what do you call it, in a, a position. So there have been contestation of these particular positions. Um, the Electoral Commission says one thing, the, uh, what do you call it, the inter-party resistance says another thing. And indeed, even some civil society organizations say something else. So yesterday's press conference was basically to update the general populace as to what we do know. Because you recall, Kojo, that we had indicated, the argument has always been that if you look at the current voter register as you have, it's credible. <coughs> and that we could up, uh, update, or be, up, update this particular uh, register through limited registration mm. to be able to run a credible election in 2020, as we have done since 2012 because we, we did limited registration and other yeah. things to be able to produce assemblymen, produce unit committee members, yeah. produce even, uh, what do you call it, new regions. <clears throat> so that was something that we had indicated, that yeah. this was something. What also indicated very clearly that if you were to look at, for example, the BVRs that we have, the BVDs that we have, the, what do you call it, the uh, systems applications and what have you, the yeah. data center and what have you, that these are, th these, are, uh, these are systems that are not obsolete. And that the worst case scenario, you can upgrade these things at a lower cost. Right. So we had made th that argument. We had also made the argument that um, if you look at the competing needs today, we are talking about coronavirus. Why would we want to deploy not less than 800 million Ghana cities to put up a new system when obviously at a cheaper cost, we can still have a very efficient Thing to do. Mm. So these were some of the arguments we made. And you know that this is not the position only of the inter-party thing. We have over 40 NGOs, mm -hmm. civil society organizations, who have come, including you know, the Imanis, the CDGs, the IDEX, the GII. These are organizations that have come out clearly, support the position of uh, what they call it, uh, the inter-party resistance uh, group. Going forward, what we then did was that we then decided that, look, Maybe we are saying it and people do not believe it. We think that maybe we may not be the technical people to do that. Mm. So let's write, for example, seek more information, for example, from um, <clears throat> the, the companies that either supplied or what they call the manufacture these uh, uh, um, systems. The information we got from them very clearly was that, look, if you look at our BVRs, if you look at our BVDs, they can all be upgraded and work at a very cheap cost. This is um, <coughs> the company that was yes, so initial uh, provider. Yeah, the, uh, that's the identification, uh, what do you call it, the HSB identification, yeah. uh, what do you call it, uh, BV. So they have indicated that they can really upgrade these things. So the question you then ask yourself is that, so why would the Jemensa led, uh, what do you call it, electoral commission still be insistent in putting up a new register, particularly yes. Where, as we speak now, we do not know of a completion of the procurement system. We are in 2012. We are in March. You are going to have a new system all put together. You want to train new uh, staff to be able to handle this equipment. You will have to compile a new register. You will have to print out the provisional register for exhibition. Mm -hmm. You will need to, again, now do duplications for political parties, all within between now and somewhere around November thereabout. If you look at the previous system that we made, all procurement systems and everything was done a year before the elections. So why are you still, and if you look at that time, we believe that that cannot be done very clearly. Besides, the Electoral Commission has not been able, and clearly, been able to publish that technical report that suggested that the current system is obsolete and needs replacement. People have asked the Electoral Commission in the spirit of transparency and accountability to publish that report. 
Nobody has been able to do that. The Electoral Commission has never been able to do that. And so for me, I think that part of it was just to remind Ghanaians about that. And again, most importantly, could you, you know, just the, our previous discussion, we were talking about God's intervention. The Ghanaian is not a special being. We are just like any other being who is capable of anything. If you look at countries around us who have gone into civil unrest, most often than not, it is because of lack of transparency and acceptability in the election process. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a situation where there's a serious dispute, and particularly when even the election management committee or uh, group is not able to give superior arguments why they want to take up a line of action, then you have something to be worried about. And so yesterday's press conference was basically to update Ghanaians about this. And to say, remind, uh, what do you call it, the letter commission, that look, we have been able to keep the peace over a period of time because of the fact that at least political parties have had some level of confidence in the systems that we run with. Mm -hmm. And we should be maintaining those uh, systems. So at this point, I mean, <coughs> the, 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 the contracts have been awarded, have they not? You know, for, for the, uh, the, the new system to be put in place, the new BBRs, the new register to be compiled. I mean, the, 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 the contract has been awarded, That right? is also, has also been shrouded in a lot of mis mis mm. You hear Imani come out to talk about even the procurement process. And the fact that the, these are things that to a very large extent, in fact, there are people suspect foul play in terms of even the procurement process. Could you, I, I, just, I just think that this whole thing is so messy. Why, as a country, when we're compiling the 2012, you know, the one that the, the biometric, the, this yeah. was based on extensive consultation by civil society organizations, including IEA, that Jimensa, who is now the electoral commissioner, was the head. Mm. We came out because of the fact that the previous one, you know, we used, we used to replace this, uh, what do you call it, register, because it was not, uh, it, uh, we had, uh, potential voters not captured in terms of their bio data and whatever right. you to be able to verify some of these things. Mm. That was why, and there was this whole argument the political parties, you had the civil society organizations, you had the international community, and we did this. If the electoral commission is minded by the fact that they want to add an extra bio data, now they are talking about facial recognition. Yeah. The system, per even the correspondence that came between the interparty resistance group and what clearly states that that can be incorporated mm -hmm. to it so that you want you want to have the fingerprint scanners you sh you can have the what they call the facial recognition so i just really cannot understand why the electoral commission is bent on piling a, a new so, register so what specifically is the inter you know party mm -hmm. resistance mm -hmm. going to do about this without jeopardizing the independence of the EC. You see, when we, we talk about the independence of the EC, it is just, how do I put it? As long as the Electoral Commission draws its funding from the taxpayer, it is only fair that we have a say. We are not saying that the decisions, that you, the fact that they say that you, you, are, you are independent, it's not a clear indication that you get up and then when we know that you are taking us into a ditch, you take mm -hmm. us. And that was why even in the wisdom of Ghanaians, or even though it's not legislated, we felt that from 1992 onwards, you should have what we call the Interparty uh, Advisory, uh, that's IPAC mm -hmm. Committee, that would come to be able to work within, with you. So that at the end of the day, you are supposed to be the arbiter of all elections. And so I should be confident that the referee who is in the middle of this game is being fair, so, and that so whatever you see IPAC as a regulator of the EC. No, not a regulator, okay. but as an advice. See, that's why I use the word, and I was very careful about it. That IPAC has been there as a matter of convention and practice, and to a very it has served as well mm. since 1992. It has served yeah. as well because people, people, people mm. make inputs into what finally becomes the system that would conduct an election. And so from day one, there's some level of confidence in the system. Right. But when you create an impression and say that, look, you are supposed to be independent, nobody is supposed to make, you are supposed to work, 
But remember that I am giving you my money to do that. I'm a taxpayer. Yeah. And therefore, I should be able to have a, a say at least in how you even manage these things. If the Electoral Commission was, uh, was in the Bible, then why then did we go on to say that we're going to have an audit of the procurement processes of the Electoral Commission so and on the basis of that remove uh, an Electoral so Commission? So that's where Parliament comes in, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And Parliament has approved these budgets for the EC to, to spend. You see, um, <clears throat> the system that we have in this, uh, in this country is the fact that, and that's why people have consistently talked about trying to decouple the legislature from the executive. Because of our current arrangement, whether you like it or not, people, if you have a majority in this, and whether the people kick against it or not, they fight, they, 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 are, they are shipped in line. The, if you look at the special budget committee that was put up, which even involves our, our, majority, uh, our minority yeah. leader, there were issues raised about some of these budgeting issues. You understand? And so um, the fact that parliament has approved funding for an activity doesn't necessarily mean that you should spend it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you should spend it. Because if you, you come and tell us that, look, you need X, Y, Z for this, like our budgets that we do, you need X, Y, Z for And you realize that there are cheaper ways of doing that. You don't go uh, going to do that. Because in the first place, you are supposed to look for money. And that's why we use the argument that we have other competing needs. 800 million is not a child's play. But does this not uh, suggest that that watchdog role that we can only rely on parliament to play for an independent institution <coughs> like EC? Well, it's not working. Politics is uh, Bekojo, rendering it redundant. Bekojo, it is not only in Ghana. You know, you remember when the Supreme Court uh, uh, judge in the US, uh, is it kind of ours? What's his name again? That guy who was accused of uh, sexual misconduct and other things. Oh. Um, you remember the guy I'm talking about? Clarence yes. Thomas. No, not Clarence Thomas. Clarence, Clarence Thomas own was a well, longer The new people. one. The um, new one that just came recently. Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. You realize that even though people came out and gave testimony and other things, they, they, the Senate still went ahead to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Look at the current impeachment process of Donald mm -hmm. Trump. The argument was not that the man never committed, it never acted that way. But on the basis of partisan lines, they, they voted in a particular way. Yeah. This is very common in national assemblies. And that gives you comfort? No, it doesn't. Mm. And that's the point. And that's why it doesn't. But it is just that, and you see, I have always indicated that among the three arms of government, it is the, uh, it is the parliamentary wing that has had the least of experiences. Any time there's a truncation of democratic rule, it is parliament that suffers. Yeah. The executive is still in existence. The judiciary is always in existence. Mm. So over the years, they've developed. Parliamentary democracy has just sustained, has been sustained in Ghana just for about, since 92 to now. Mm. So there are a lot of learning processes that we need to go through. So sometimes when people tend to compare parliament to again, the judiciary, parliament to say the executive, it's a bit because of our history of militarism. Right. So we have had a situation where parliamentary democracy in itself has not been properly developed. We are still learning. But I will just give you examples of countries where even they have had about 200, mm. three, uh, 250 million, uh, sorry, 100 years of uh, parliamentary democracy. Yeah. And that we still find such, such, such behaviors in them. Fair so enough. that is what the point I was just okay. trying to make. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, yesterday, <coughs> the Deputy Attorney General was addressing uh, the Association of um, uh, Government Attorneys I think, <coughs> of Africa. Uh, and uh, he took the opportunity to say a few things about the recent Airbus scandal that was uh, making the rounds. But actually, following that, he was interviewed on Joy FM. Let's catch a bit of what he said. 26 countries, the UK, France, um, United States, as well as 33 other countries, including Ghana. And the government of Ghana had no role at all. So clearly it was unsolicited. It's something that um, was, was assisted by events that were in the United Kingdom. Okay. The judgment of the Crown Court of England and, and Ghana government owing that responsibility as a duty to the people to take it up. I think that clearly uh, is the, the, the best form of, or the best demonstration of, of, of the fight against um, corruption, the best demonstration of a commitment to uphold the rule of law.
first by President Nathan Kwekufadu to have ordered the investigation to say matter. And that is all he has done. I think that we must allow this process to go on. Now, I said uh, finally, though, but one quick one also just before we go, because in your earlier submission, you mentioned that the people or person is going around campaigning. I would want to find out specifically from you who you're referring to. Oh, I'm referring to the vice president who transformed into a president and won <laughs> and, and, and lost the 20. Um, first one election to interview and lost in sixteen elections. And his name is. I'm to come back again in 2020, and I'm saying that if. Uh, are, are you referring to Mr. John Dramani Mahama? Absolutely. So that was um, the Deputy Attorney General, uh, Mr. Godfrey Dami, speaking to my colleague, MFA Apo, on the midday news on Joy FM. So. Um, uh, let's get into this. First, uh, let's invite on, on the phone lines Adam Senanu, who is an anti-corruption campaigner here in Ghana. Mr. Senanu, it's good to speak to you. Good morning. Thanks for your time. Good morning. Right. So uh, the, the Deputy Attorney General is not mincing words here. He says that his expectation is that those who were in office at the time the Airbus scandal occurred, now that Airbus has admitted that they were paying bribes and seeking to influence government officials, they ought to be informing the nation of who those government officials are and that he's disappointed by their silence. Is that the same feeling that uh, the anti-corruption community and you in particular have or do you have a different view of it? Well, I guess that um, from where he sits, that's the position uh, he has. Uh, I was curious when I heard that the Deputy Attorney General was speaking on this matter which is an issue that has been re referred to the office of the special prosecutor. I think that ideally we should not compromise the integrity of the office of the special prosecutor by making comments before he has finished. Otherwise, it will seem as if every political actor will have something to say. Um, so I, I think that once it was referred to the office of the special prosecutor, the special prosecutor is the one who should be telling us whether some people are collaborating, they are not, et cetera. Mm. Um, otherwise, we will, we will create difficulties for ourselves. Right. Um, uh, forgive me for playing devil's advocate here, but <clears throat> we know that this is a case that has been um, concluded in a British, American, and French court. So... Could it not be that Mr. Dami was commenting on those concluded cases and not necessarily on the investigation of the special prosecutor? Uh, and in any case, since when did it become wrong to comment on an investigation? We understand you can't comment on a case in court, but as for an investigation, why can't we all comment on it? Well, yes, so that is why he, it is fair for him if in his position he wants to make that comment. I just said that if the president has referred the matter um, then it seems to me that in respect of that matter, uh, giving our own, you know, um, uh, jurisdiction where the investigation is now commencing, ideally we should wait for the man who the presidency has referred this to, to speak to us on what has transpired. Otherwise, because of the nature of the relationship between the AG and the OSP, it will appear that there is some influence being brought to bear on the OSP. Right. Um, so ideally, we should be hearing from the special prosecutor. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Dami has spoken. Let's, let's talk about what he actually did say. And his expectation um, is that there were people in office at the time this deal was struck between Ghana and Airbus. There were people in charge. Um, at the beginning, the vice president was uh, John Mahama. He, as vice president, was the chairman of the, um, of the council that would make decisions on uh, the purchase of military aircraft. So he would certainly know which government officials were involved in, in this deal. So Mr. Dami is saying, well, why not tell the people of Ghana about Airbus? Why not tell them who was involved, whether things were done well or not? Why not uh, come clean to the people of Ghana? After all, you are seeking their vote in the next election. Uh, as, a, as a matter of governance, do you, do you see that, that it, do you think he has a point? Well, he would ordinarily. Um, I don't know what the um, lawyers of that team would be advising at this stage. 
Um, don't forget we're in an election year. And I guess that once it is expected that people of their own volition would speak up to these issues, which I agree would be the ideal situation to the extent that they are so minded uh, as to give the facts properly. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm sure that the stakes, what they are, I'm not too surprised that we find ourselves where we are at this moment. Right. So I, I'm not sure I've got an answer from you whether you think he has a point. That the no, I did say yes, he does. Should... I, ordinarily, okay. that's what you expect. Right. I said so. I mean, yeah. I don't think that um, there's uh, anything that takes away from people just saying, look, yes, I was part of this process. This is what transpired, etc." But mm. as I've also pointed out, I mean, as I analyze it, the stakes, we are in an election year. The stakes mm. are high. And it depends on what their legal team is advising them to do or not do at this stage. Right. So, yes, I mean, ordinarily people should be able to speak to this mm. voluntarily without any restrictions whatsoever. Okay. All right. Uh, please stay with us. I've got a couple <coughs> other things I'd love to hear you on. Um, but, uh, Mr. Bauer, this Airbus issue, would it not actually put the matter to bed if, in the same way that the opposition expresses their view on every issue of national importance. If the opposition were to speak on this, particularly the officials, the officials who were at post at the time it happened and for which reason would certainly be aware of all the facts, would it not be useful to hear those officials tell the people of Ghana that, well, this is what we did, that's what we did, everything was completely legal, so there's nothing to worry about. Why leave the issue lingering with questions in people's minds, awaiting an investigation. Uh, why not tell us, you know, you see, your side the, of it? I mean, uh, it's just like, just, look, Kojo, let's, let's, let's be straight with sensitivities. The documents that have come out that all of us have perused, nobody has been, no ex-government official has been mentioned in any of those documents. No name. No, that's the mentioned. point I'm trying to say. Yeah. No name has mm. been cited. If Gavadami has a name that has been mentioned, the proper place to stick it is the special uh, prosecutor's office. I think that the government in its own wisdom felt that, look, this thing needed to be investigated further and therefore referred the case to the OSP. So what business does he have in trying to talk about mentioning names? If he has evidence, the only place he can send is that place. But you see, Kojo, I will state this and state it again. This is a diversionary tactic. The government is seriously on its back here. They have answers uh, to provide in terms of the Galamsey challenges. If you look at their corruption records, in fact, if you look at the G GPI that has come out over the three years of Akufuado, his best performance is not even up to the worst performance of John Mahama. They know that the corruption platform, they cannot win. They know that in terms of good governance, they cannot win. They know that the only straw they have is this quote and unquote Airbus scandal. You have chosen to refer this thing to a particular body to work on. What business do you have in talking about the, Because the government, if the government knew that this was the case, they could have said, okay, Attorney General, find a way of handling this thing and let's see how it goes. And that maybe Attorney General could have then said that as part of the tools we are going to uh, deploy. We're going to use the OSP. So then you become there. But the government in its own wisdom just felt that this should go directly to the uh, OSP because they're looking at the confines of what is uh, purported to have been done. They could properly handle it. So what business does it have in talking about people should come out w willingly to <clears throat> say that, oh, we were there and this were the things. Wasn't it the b b reason? Why didn't the government just say that, look, we just got this DPA that has come from uh, uh, the United Kingdom. And that we want people to voluntarily come out to do that. Why didn't the government request for that? The first thing the president did, and he did this by public announcement, was that he was sending this, the rate at which he even referred it into the OSP. If you compare that to other scandals that we have, that we are talking about. Because at the end of the day, the figures we are looking at this thing is roughly somewhere around 3 million euros and there about. There are scandals that people have expected the government to have acted with that same alacrity. They have not. Huge figures in multiples and multiples of the 3 million euros that you have. And so I agree with uh, the anti-corruption, uh, what they call it, crusader who is... Adam Senanu. Adam, Adam uh, Senanu. Yes. Senanu. Make it. You have referred it into a body. The body is supposed to be doing its work. 
What business do you have in coming to deal with it, mm. apart from the fact that you want to redirect public discourse? So that's your critique of what the Deputy <coughs> Attorney General has done. But I am also interested in your critique of what, how your party has handled it, or how the former government officials under whose watch this happened have, have handled it. Do you feel that this matter could have died out by now if they had come out to explain what happened to the people of Ghana? Could this diversionary tactic, as you describe it, would it not have killed it so that nobody pays attention to it anymore? First and foremost, you will recall that the moment this thing happened, the former Attorney General issued a statement. Immediately after that, the President referred this thing to the OSP. But the former Attorney General statement didn't give any information. It simply said, the thing you have read does not include any uh, accusations of bribery. That's all she said. So that's the, the position that's we That's no have. information but, about but, what but, happened. You see, that is, the question is this. After that particular statement that was issued by the former Attorney General, the government referred the case to the OSP. If the OSP is minded that, look, we want to call the government officials, come and tell us, this thing, who are those who did the procurement? They, that is a, a forum for them to go and respond. Why should they come out? Because if the government felt that, look, let's see people to, let people come out and have self-confession. Oh, yes, I was involved and nothing happened. He would have said so. He referred it into a body. So if Matnamidu and his office think are minded by the fact that, look, we think that Mr. A and B and this thing would have been involved in this, then we invite them. Again, so what business do you have in telling, telling the, telling, quote and unquote, ex-government officials who have not been cited anyway, mm -hmm. to come out and say, say so that the basis of that you use the same template that was used in England in resolving the issue in Ghana. But again, you are critiquing what they are doing. I'm asking about your party, because your party and, and the, the, what you are the giving me is government not officials who were in charge at the time. And let's be fair, the former president, John Mahama, was the, the buck stops with the president, right? So this happened during the regime of the was former that, president. What, so uh, if you can the regime, what do you question, mean? Uh, it, the, the time period during which the purchases were... Yes, under the NDC. That's right. Okay. So, so as the number one official responsible for the government at the time, he is best placed to know what happened. I'm not saying that he was involved. I'm saying he's best placed to know what happened. So why not tell the people of Ghana that? Well, have you heard that this the, is what happened? Have you heard that the uh, uh, OSP has invited the former president? He has not gone. So again, so you're the focused, point is he? So again, no. you're focusing on what the, no. they are doing. Excuse me. Look, as a country uh -huh. led by His Excellency the current uh -huh. president, uh -huh. has indicated uh -huh. that for me, in bringing finality to this case, yes. I am referring this thing to o, the OSP. Uh -huh. The OSP, in its own modus operandi, mm. would want to say, we want to invite individuals. Mm. So uh, is, there, is Godfrey telling us that there has been an instance that a government official, mm -hmm. because you are sitting here and speculating, that's and saying what? that the back stops with the former president. That's speculation. That's no, a no, you are saying that this is the case. So I want to believe it's that this, speculation, this though, is... speculation, though, I just want to say. No, but the point I'm just... The back stops it. with the president. So it's if that is the case, mm -hmm. if, the, if, the, if, the, if the OSP is minded by the fact that the back stops with the former president, mm -hmm. is it the case that the uh, OSP has invited the former president and has refused to honor that invitation to give the information? No. I am just trying to tell you that as a country, mm -hmm. we have chosen that a body should handle that. Mm -hmm. What business does the NDC or the former... Uh, this, coming out to say, that, oh, this is the case. When you have said that, this is a platform that if you have anything, go there and say it. But will it not put the matter to rest so that no one can use it as a diversionary tactic? That would be the crisis for other people to be able to manage. That is not our crisis. That is not a crisis of the former government. You, you don't mind that the current government, in your words, look, is diverting let me tell you, the attention the of the NDC public from is committed. From, from look, corruption. the NDC, in principle, is committed to fighting corruption and making sure that any time there's a suspicion of corruption anywhere, we should look at it and deal with it. Mm -hmm. Because that is the only way this country can move forward. Mm -hmm. That being said, we have no evidence that the former uh, government officials are not cooperating with the process that has been laid down by the president and his government. So that's why I'm saying that this is just purely a diversionary tactic. So that is kill, all. So kill it by explaining what happened. No, no. What we should be doing is treating the comments of uh, Godfrey Dami with contempt. Because simply he had no business mentioning it, saying these things when there was an office that had been uh, designated to do that particular. He had no business in doing that. He should be fighting the numerous corruption cases in his current government. All right. That he should be giving you. us evidence of how he's fighting that. All right. So a number of people have actually mentioned 
<clears throat> and accused the former president of being government official one and his brother of being the intermediary five. And what, what is the basis for that argument? But I have a question. Yes. Does it surprise you that the former president hasn't taken legal action against any of these people, accusing him of being involved in a bribery scandal? In the first place, I think that if you look at the former president and his, uh, his demeanor, he is somebody who is interested in cooperating with the system because he's occupied that office before. He expects, for example, that on January uh, 7, 2021, if he becomes a president and he gives orders to a state institution to handle a particular case, they should handle it and handle it well. And that any other person who, quote and unquote, is involved should cooperate right. with that body. That being said, the current president, at the end of the day, should not, uh, uh, is interested in unraveling this issue. And that's why the party has not, and the former president's office has not indicated that they do not want to cooperate with the office of the uh, special prosecutor. Right. Let it be said that he was invited to cooperate with them and he didn't do it. Let it be said that there were some ex government officials who had been invited and they refused to cooperate. Until we get to that uh, 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 bridge, Godfrey Dami has no business making the statements he made yesterday to Joy FM. All right. Mr. Adam Senanu, thank you for staying with us on the line. This is what I wanted <coughs> to ask you before you go. Uh, as part of his comments at this uh, high level um, uh, meeting yesterday, the Deputy Attorney General said that Ghana should start considering the possibility of these deferred um, uh, um, prosecution agreements like what we saw with Airbus uh, and the, the courts in UK, US and France. And that uh, when there are corporations accused of um, criminal misconduct, uh, uh, you know, financial misconduct, um, that we should explore the option of deferred um, prosecution agreements when the, all the facts are admitted to by, uh, by the accused. Uh, what do you think that would do for, for the fight against corruption in Ghana? Would that be a, a, a positive move? Well, it's a difficult question. Um, they, on one hand, one expects that people just do the right thing and we can use our resources uh, appropriately for national development. But on the other hand, I mean, to the extent that it provides an opportunity for those who would unlikely give the kind of information that allows us to even retrieve and correct systems that have gone wrong. I think that that's a good suggestion because then you have opportunity to, to, to lift the lead to understand what has gone on in various corporate engagements and contracts at the international level. Um, and it also then allows you to be able to um, retrieve some of the resources, if not most of it, that has, has been um, called away. So I think that it's a good suggestion in terms of thinking through our legal framework and what can be done as we move ahead, and it's something to take on board. All right. Mr. Senator, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on that with us. Um, I'm going to give the last minute to you, Mr. Bauer, on the same issue, the same suggestion. Uh, what do you think? Uh, good innovation for our anti-corruption fight or not? For me, anything that will enhance our anti-corruption fight is welcome. If issues of uh, DPAs are employed in Ghana is something that will to a very large extent because usually it's not just about even just fishing out the culprits and punishing but the lessons you learn from that because I want to believe that <clears throat> the British government in its own wisdom will learn something out of this. The companies that are involved will also try to put in systems that will uh, curtail such practices and so for me any experience that is worth employing in Ghana that will enhance a fight against corruption is very very much welcome. So this one in particular would be welcome? Yeah if at the end of the day within our circumstances it can work um, that is something we should look at. I, I do not profess to be an expert in uh, anti-grafts what they call it uh, uh, issues but I think that if it is something that can really enhance our fight against corruption mm -hmm. trust me I am all for it. All right. Mr. Edward Bauer Mm -hmm. Member of Parliament, Pumongo, thank you so much for making the time to be with us on AM Talk. There's even more coming on the show. Stay exactly where you are. A few messages from our partners, and then we'll be right back with more.